Hey guys, it's me, K. Marie, and welcome to another YouTube video. Babe, oh, delete the dog. Delete the dog. <laughs> Shit. Now, let's go to the next one. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I can't really tell if I like it or not because it's like it's giving me um mom vibes because my mom has blonde hair and then I'm just like I kind of look like her when I look in the mirror and I'm just like is that you or is that your mom I can't tell so y'all um originally I wanted it blonder but my hair is jet black so by being jet black y'all know that it takes more than one face to get to the color that you want so this is the first trial by the time y'all see me again, I probably won't be a blonde anymore because I don't know, y'all. I just don't know if it's given. So if y'all watched my last YouTube video, you know that I was telling y'all that I didn't have a great experience at the surgery center where I went, which is Unique Aesthetic Surgery Center. So I'm gonna be telling y'all the tea about them and basically how they had me fucked up and um, when they had me fucked up and where they had me fucked up. So just stay tuned and keep watching so y'all can get the uh, little razzle dazzle that I have to offer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sipping right now, okay? Because it's Saturday, I'm off work. So why the fuck not? Let's do it. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is how they have me fucked up in pre-op. Let's talk about when, the day before the procedure. So the day before the procedure, um, I had to go to the center and I basically had to, you know, fill out all your paperwork. They make you try on a faja, see what size is best for you, um, so on and so forth, you know, stuff to get you ready for the procedure. So I went the day before the procedure and I was getting everything handled. Um, when I first walked into the surgical setting, or the surgical center rather. The first thing that read me the wrong way was that they didn't speak to a bitch. That's suspicious. Yeah, that's, That's weird. Like nobody really acknowledged my presence. So I walked in, I'm looking around. It's really only one person in there because keep in mind it's COVID right now. So- Coronavirus! Uh, that bitch ruining everything. So we can't even do much. So when you go in the surgery center, it was just like me, one other patient, and then it was the receptionist lady. She didn't acknowledge me at all. So I walk in, I'm looking around or whatever, and up to the receptionist lady and I'm like, hi. But what I was expecting in my mind was for me to walk in and for them to be like, hi, welcome to Unique Aesthetic Surgery Center. How may I help you today? You know, that's casual shit, right? Well, at least that's what we do where I work. Um, keep in mind while y'all watching this video that I do work at one of the top surgery centers in California. And also in the United States. Oh, wow. So I have certain expectations that, I, that I'm expecting to happen, okay? They don't speak, whatever. I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to get this ass done. So I don't care if you speak or not type shit. <laughs> so I go to the lady or whatever. And she tells me that they're going to have me fill out this paperwork and blah, 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 blah. So when I fill out my paperwork, they put me into a room. Um, a secluded room by myself and they tell me to fill out this packet let me set the let me set the room for y'all okay so I'm in a room the lights aren't on so it's dim okay it's dark in there but there's a big window like the window behind me so it has like natural sunlight coming in so it wasn't like pitch black but just know that the lights in the room weren't on okay so I'm sitting there at this desk filling out my paperwork she leaves out and she's like um, while you're filling all of that out, I'm going to go and do some other shit. I don't know what she said, but all I know is that she wasn't in there while I was doing what I had to do. So I'm filling out my paperwork and a little bit is not sitting right with me at this point either, just because 
at my surgery center where I work, we discuss all of the pre-op stuff that they have to sign with the patient. You know, we let them know what they're signing because you know that medical jargon bullshit is real so sometimes when you're reading stuff and you don't understand it it creates you know conflict right then and there so that's why as a nurse when i'm having a patient sign something i explain this to them in layman's terms so that they understand what the fuck is going on and oh i said i was gonna stop cussing this much so i explained to them what the heck was going on and that way everybody's on the same page Nobody was there explaining anything to me during any part of the signing of any of my pre-op paperwork, okay? It was nobody in the room but me. I'm going to take my time and read this shit out because I'm like, I don't know what's going on. You know, like, I need to read it. I need to understand it before I sign it. So, I get done finishing the paperwork. It's like a 30-page packet or something like that. It's called a contract. You want us to sign this? Just a formality, really. So, she comes back in the room. Um, she gives me a faja. The faja that I tried on originally was too big. So she's like, mm, this looks too big. We'll just give you two sizes smaller. So I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking she's going to bring those back for me to try on. She never ends up having me try them on. She just kind of eyeballed it to see and was like, well, um, this was too big. We'll do a size blase blase. And I'm like, okay. Um, so that also was weird because I'm thinking in my head, why not? bring the size back that you think is a better fit and have me try that on as well because what if you eyeballing it and it's still not the same fucking size or the right size you know what i mean so that was an issue within itself so moving on that was the day before the procedure when i arrived at the surgery center um for the day of my procedure um, it was a whole new staff. So everybody that I talked to the day before wasn't there anymore. I was seeing all new faces, Loki. Um, this lady calls me in the room and she's telling me, you know, I need to change and um, she's going to have me sign some more paperwork. So she basically hands me like my gown and stuff, my paper gown, a bag to put all my clothes in. And she's like, okay, um, you can get it changed right now and then we'll fill out some paperwork. So I'm like, okay. So why, after she says that, she still doesn't leave the room. So I'm like, well, that's weird because you're supposed to give the patient some privacy to fucking change. You know what I mean? When, you know, the nurse tells you, oh, we're going to have you change at this time. Da, da, da. I give you your privacy and I step out so you can be comfortable. You can have your goods all loose. You can put your gown on. And then by the time I come back in the room, you're already covered. So I'm not seeing you ass naked. So I had asked her, I'm like, you know, um, can I have a little privacy or whatever? So she's like, oh, you want me to leave? And I'm like, yeah. Yes, I do want you to leave. <laughs> Is that unheard of? So she steps out the room. I end up changing. And then she comes back in the room. So she comes back in the room and she has paperwork that she wants me to sign. So when she brings the paperwork to me, she was like, oh, you missed some signatures from yesterday. So I'm going through the paperwork, the new paperwork that she wants me to sign. But I'm reading it. As I was doing the day before, I'm reading it before I'm signing it. And she's holding on to the paperwork as I'm trying to sign it. So let me let me let me set the room up for y'all. So this is her holding the paperwork. This is me reading the paperwork and trying to sign it, but she got a tight ass grip on this motherfucker while I'm trying to sign it. So um after I'm done reading the first page, I sign and then I try to flip the page so I can sign as well. And she's like you didn't see this yesterday? What the f is that supposed to mean, bitch? And I'm like, well, clearly not. If I would have saw it yesterday, I would have signed it. So it gets to a page where I don't really understand what it's saying. Um, I'm asking her questions about the paperwork that she wants me to sign. And she gets frustrated with that. And she's like, so I'm gonna wrap to record on the iPad now because my phone is on some weird shit. And the iPad won't even fit in my ring holder. So now I got to sit on the floor <laughs> and record this way. But whatever, it's all good. I need to figure out what the fuck I was talking about since this motherfucking phone went to cut off on the bitch. Basically, she ends up getting flustered while I'm asking her to help me understand what I'm signing. And she was like, do you just want to speak to the manager? And I'm thinking in my head like, well, bitch, I didn't want to speak to the manager. I just wanted you to explain this shit to me. But since you brought it up, yeah, let me speak to the manager. So she ends up leaving the room 
When she comes back in the room, she has no manager with her. You're full of That's what you are. You full of Now take that to the bank and cash that damn check. Okay, so moving on, because clearly she was just wasting my time. And shaking the table. So um, I'm about to continue to talk to y'all about the rest of my experiences at the surgery center. And we gonna wrap this up. Dr. Fisher was very, 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 very nice, okay? This don't have nothing to do with Dr. Fisher. He was a very good surgeon. He has great bedside manners. This don't have shit to do with him. All the issues that I had with the surgery center are in regards to the nurses or whoever else I came in contact with other than Dr. Fisher, period. So moving on. So I walk to the OR, I get on the OR table, they lay me down and he's getting ready to start my IV so that he can use the propofol to put me to sleep. But this nigga don't have gloves on y'all. He don't have no gloves on. So I'm laying down and I'm looking at him and I'm like, um, are you gonna put some gloves on? Because at this time he has my whole tourniquet on and he has the IV ready. The cap is off the fucking needle and he's ready to thread that shit through. And so I'm like, can you put some gloves on? And he's like, well, um, honestly, it doesn't have to be sterile. Um, and honestly, I have lupus, so honestly, it hurts me more than I have gloves on than it hurts you. I don't give a fuck, Keisha. That shit's dumb as fuck, bro, because whatever medical condition that he said he fucking had, that should be an additional reason for you to use gloves. Am I right? Or am I right? So he doesn't end up using any gloves at all to start my IV. None. You're killing me. <laughs> You're really killing me. When I wake up from my procedure, like I already told y'all, I was in hella fucking pain. And... The nurse comes over to me and she's like, like well, the anesthesia provider gave you 12.5 of Demerol and four milligrams of Zofran during your procedure, so we can't give you anything else. <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> what do you mean? So a lot of y'all might not even know, you know, about narcotics and all that other stuff, which is cool, but just know that 12.5 of Demerol <laughs> and four milligrams of Zofran is not a lot to have gotten for that type of intensive procedure like i didn't get any post-op medications at all while i was at the facility that 12.5 demerol was given to me during the actual procedure um with nothing else for pain literally nothing when i woke up i got no pain medications at all they discharged me with like a 10 out of 10 pain and it just ended up being a big ass mess They gave me a physical prescription for me to take to the pharmacy, which was an issue because I already got discharged with 10 out of 10 pain. And now I got to drive around to 10 buck two and find me a place to get my prescriptions filled. Where I work, the doctors give the prescription to the patient days before the procedure. They get their prescription ahead of time because it's a huge inconvenience to have to drive around town while you are in pain trying to get your prescription filled so I, I don't end up getting any of my pain medications until two hours after i left the surgery center and y'all know i'm in hella fucking pain so to me that was inconsiderate because i should have had this shit yesterday and in my mind i thought that they were going to give me physical pills or whatever when i left like i didn't know it was going to be a prescription that i had to take and go get filled myself after i just got a whole ass bbl i don't understand i really don't but moving on i realized that once i actually got my prescription that they only gave me 12 norco tablets which you can take norco every four to six hours so the y'all giving me 12 tablets if i am taking them every four hours is only gonna last me what like two and a half days and that's not shit when you in that much pain like you're going to need more than that and i just got a whole ass invasive ass bbl y'all sucking all this shit out of me and putting it the fuck back in it's some bull america y'all know that's some bull so before i left the facility i was expecting them to review discharge instructions with me reviewing all these medications why to take them when to take them how to empty your drain out and everything like that but me being a nurse i know how to change or empty a jp drain 
But if I was somebody who didn't have that experience, I probably wouldn't know what the fuck to do, honestly. So they didn't review any discharge instructions with me, okay? They put a piece of paper in my bag. They sent me on my merry ass way. So the next day, I'm reviewing the discharge instructions that they gave me with the instructions that they gave me the day before my procedure because I told you I went there twice. Both of those papers said two different things, okay? One paper, for example, told me not to sit for four weeks. Another said to only sit for three weeks. Like, both of them had different things on them. Hey, one thing about me, I'm going to save some motherfucking receipts because you never know when you going to need them. Amen. So oh, I just wanted to show y'all that I have proof about what I was talking about. So example number one, this says to keep your compression stockings on for seven days. Um, but on this um, discharge instructions, it tells me to keep it on for two days. Give me a minute, let me find it for y'all. See, this one says keep the anti-embolism stockings on for 10 days. So prime example, this says here, don't sit for three weeks after surgery. Um, and then over here on this paper, it says don't sit for four weeks, okay? So it says this time you can start sitting in, on a BBL pillow and Dr. Fisher specifically told me not to use a BBL pillow. So I was trying to figure out, am I supposed to be using it or not? Like, which one do y'all want? Because that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that's just a few of the things that were different between the two sets of like physical instructions that I got. Very misleading. So I ended up having to call the um, surgical center multiple times to try to figure out, well, which one is am I supposed to be doing? Because I don't fucking know. So when I call, they're like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry that um, your discharge instructions are saying the wrong things. This is what you're supposed to do and yada, 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 which I appreciate them verifying the information. But I should have never had to call you all to see what was up. You know what I mean? Like, oh, ah, the ghetto, the ghetto, the ghetto. Anyways, moving on. So after your procedure, you have to get five post-op massages by the clinic before you can even go home. So my first day that I went to go get my massage, it was a lot of weird shit going on. I would say almost every time that I was getting a massage, either people would be coming in and out unannounced or it would just be like a lot of, hold on, I got to go do something else and then coming back. In fact, while I was getting my massage, a janitor walks in i wish i could insert this clip because i had i was recording everything y'all but a janitor walks in and starts mopping the floor while i'm laying down on the massage table getting my my massage done that's why is she in here also that's just weird as fuck like where is my privacy at you got a bitch mopping in here while i'm in pain getting a massage done and it's fucking blood and shit shooting out of my ass while you doing this massage it was it, it was just weird okay so i feel like maybe on the last day of me getting my massage she's massaging me and she's like oh hold on my postmates is here this bitch left the room while i'm ass naked on the table went to go get her postmates came back in the room and continued my massage but that's not even a fucked up part the fucked up part is that she had her gloves on the whole time. So when they're massaging you, they have their gloves on. She used those same gloves to go and grab her Postmates from wherever she went to grab it from and to come back in my room and continue massaging me with those same fucking gloves on. Do you know how nasty that is? She ends up trying to touch me again with those same gloves on and I'm like, wait, uh... Can you change your gloves? And she's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I'll change my gloves. I didn't touch anything, though, but I'll change my gloves. And I'm like, you didn't touch anything. 
You had to touch your phone to see that your Postmates was here. You had to open the door to go get the Postmates. You had to grab the Postmates bag from the Postmates deliverer. And then you had to come back in the door, touch the door again, and then put the food down and touch me. How the fuck didn't you touch anything? Where they do that at? I'm gonna let y'all think about it. Y'all tell me where they do that at, cause I don't know. This is blasphemy. This is madness. The next day when I woke up, my mom ends up telling me that they called her initially to pick up the wrong patient. So my mom drives to the surgery center to pick me up and they wheel the patient to the car and the patient is getting into the car. My mom was like, wait, this isn't my daughter. And so they're like, oh, this, this isn't the right ride. And my mom is like, no. And so they're like, oh, we're just gonna have you come back. And I'm not sure how you could have possibly called the wrong ride for a different patient. How, how, does that, how does that happen? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. So my whole experience at that surgery center was a piece of shit. Um, if I ever go get another BBL done, I do want it to be by Dr. Fisher, but I don't want it to be at that surgery center. It just was so unprofessional. Like it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I think that covers it. I think that covers why everything was a mess. Like I said, I had problems from the pre-op, the post-op, the everything. It just was all an issue. But wait. There's more. Hang on to your sheet, baby. I forgot to show y'all my pre-op pictures. I dropped the whole ass video and then put my pre-op pictures in there. And I know y'all was probably thinking like, this bitch is a scammer. That's what I would be thinking. Shit. So I'm so sorry I didn't put in my pre-op pictures, but I'm gonna put them in there anyway. Be nice to me because they're not cute. Okay, they're not cute. So it's three hours before my procedure right now and um, I just wanted to show y'all my body before I got my procedure done so y'all could see what it's hitting for. Zero out of ten. <laughs> but yeah, so let's do that. <clears throat> video i think the next video that i talk about i think i'm gonna be telling y'all like who i am like who is this chick who is she i do not know who she is who is she tell me who she is i'm gonna be telling y'all who i am where i'm from where i live at now what i do what it is what's up got y'all day in the court oh, damn. Hmm? sorry so thank you very 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 much for watching stay tuned because there's more to come Anyways, boom. <laughs>